So welcome to Math 208, Monday, April 19th, is our class session. Still, somehow that camera's. Not doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. So this is week 15 of week 16. So next week, our course ends. So there are a couple things that I want to make sure everybody sees, whether you're here or watching this recording afterwards. And got this pin, I've got this recorded, and I've got this named. Got it. We have to finish the last homework assignment, your Newton Alta assignments and our last exam. So homework 11, Newton Alta, and exam three. You'll learn how to spell. Homework 11, you've got a track on that already. That is due by 11.59 tomorrow. Tomorrow is the 20th. And that is your last homework. Even though we're still going to talk about new things this week, I do not want to give you another homework and then you're working on an exam and the homework at the same time. So far, we've done it that way and I like it that when you were working on the exam, you were not working on any homework. So just one thing at a time, let's do one thing at a time. So this is your last homework, written homework. It was about linear regression and we're going to talk about a new thing this week, which is kind of fun, but you won't do a homework problem on it. That does not mean it's not on the exam. What we're going to talk about this week is covered on the exam, but you just don't have a time to practice it and get that feedback. So you have to do some practicing on your own or ask me for other solutions on your own. So pay attention to that. Just because it's the last homework doesn't mean it's the last thing that's on the exam. Okay, Newton Alta. Over the course of the semester, we've had 30 assignments here. But now is the final due date. I mean, we let you approach those at your own pace. Maybe I should have been more enforcing deadlines there, but that's just another thing that I've learned during this whole mess. So this final time you can work on this, you can work up to 11.59 Monday, April 26. And that's gonna overlap with your exam a little bit But still, I want you to focus on your exam mostly having completed these. Now, the assignments will remain open inside there if you want to use them or work on them. But whatever you've completed by April 26, that is your Newton Alton portion of your grade. On your grade reports, I always update how much you've done so far. So different people have done different amounts. But that is all 30 assignments. Whatever assignment you're on right now, 
you have one week to finish the rest of the assignments or as many of the assignments as you can. Okay, now here's the problem with exam three and I mentioned this, but this is the solution we're gonna use. Normally, I'd post the exam after we were done talking about things and then let you work on it for a week and hand it in during the next week. Well, next week is the last week. So you have to hand in the exam next week. So how many days can I give you to work on the exam? And so far we've given you seven days for the first two exams. I thought initially about shortening that and I thought, no, that's not right. Uh, if seven days you worked on the other exams, seven days you're gonna work on this exam. But I also have to hand in grades relatively quickly. So next week is the last week and we're gonna give you up to Friday to work on the exam next week. So the exam is due 11.59 PM. Like we've kept all our due dates, all our deadlines. Friday, April 30. And to give you seven days to work on it, that means I'm gonna release the exam by 11.59 p.m. on Friday, April 23. Pay attention, that is this Friday. So you can start working on the exam this Friday near midnight. So you get your seven days to work on the exam. That's fair. We had before done like Tuesday to Tuesday on the exams, but as it happens, I got to hand in the grades on that following Tuesday. So you can have a full seven days to work on it, but I have to have it back by the end of next week so I can read it and give the grades to the college. Now, today, this week, we have two class sessions. April 19 and April 21. And here we're going to be talking about chapter 13, which is a fun test. One more test, well, two more tests that we're going to perform with a new distribution. But next week, you also have two class sessions. And as before, we're just going to do them as review sessions. When we did the previous exams, we gave you a week where we didn't do any new material we're just doing review. Since it's the end of the semester, of course, we're not doing any new material, but these two class sessions will still have these two class sessions and you'll be reviewing. Now, pay attention that, you know, that's while you're working on the exam. So you have the exam in your hand, you're working on some problems, like the previous exams, they likely are similar to ones in the book. I took them out of the book. Uh, we've had six exams on the first, sorry, we've had six problems on the first two exams. I think we're gonna have six problems on this exam. That's my goal. So it's gonna be exactly like before and, and you can come and ask questions during these two class sessions next week. Not required, but you're welcome to come and ask questions or just hang out whatever you want to do, but that'll give you an opportunity to ask questions for sample problems if you want to see something like an exam problem. So this is kind of like what the end of the semester looks like. And I will write this down in an email for everybody this afternoon sometime. So, you know, if you're not watching this live or if you're not seeing the recording till tomorrow, that you at least have this information now. 
There's one more thing I'm going to write down here, and that is, you know, after all this is done, after I've got the exams graded them, I will post them back into your Google Drive folder. with your final grade report. As soon as I've done graded them, and that'll be, you know, a couple of days. But I will send out an email, say, hey, your graded exams and your final grade report are in your Google Drive folder. Now, what I'm gonna do when you get that, I mean, I don't know what you've done with your papers that I've returned to you so far, and, and you can do anything you want to do with them because they're literally your property. But with the end of the semester, I cannot just leave your papers in the folder forever. So when I give you an email, say, oh, okay, your graded exam, your final grade report are posted, you should probably go to your folder and take out all your papers that you want to keep and stuff like that. And, uh, and do with them then what you want to do with them. I will leave them up for two weeks after I let you know that they're there. But then I have to do some house cleaning, clean that out, get ready for the next class, stuff like that. Move this camera just a little bit. So these papers, all your papers will remain posted for two more weeks after I put them there. And then you can download them and store them as you like. After that, I will get rid of them. I will delete them. And that eventually means permanently delete. So you can't come back to me next year and say, oh, do you have my exam? I won't have your exam. Uh, the college requires instructors to keep all these records for a certain amount of time, but it's not a year. I'll go look up what it is actually, but it's not one year. So get your papers, download them, own them, then you have what you want. Okay, very good. So now we're going to do a new and interesting thing, our last mission. Our last topic, whatever you want to call it. This is chapter 13. And, and unless you have a question, you can pop in with a question in the chat or vocal, that's fine too. If you think about a question about our schedule for the remainder of the semester, if you come up with a question later, don't worry, just shoot me an email. But this is the basic outline of what the end of the semester looks like. Oh, okay, I also have one more thing I'll show you. that will be very useful to you. So think about what we've been doing for the last several weeks. If you had to put it into one word, it would be test. Test, 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 test. If you had to put it in two words, it would be hypothesis test. We've invented or learned or practiced making tests to tell us whether we believe something could be true or not. Not whether we absolutely know something is true. We're not talking about that kind of certainty, but with some simple tests, we can say, oh yeah, that's a good evidence for that. Or no, there's no evidence for that. This is not good enough. We can tell whether something is likely to be true or not. And we've done so far 
hypothesis tests. We've done Z tests, several. We've done T tests. Recently, we've done chi-squared tests. And if you want to take more statistics classes someday, any day, you're going to learn some other tests. They keep going. We have one more in this class, though. It's called the F test. Or it's got a popular acronym called ANOVA. It sounds like a science fiction character, but ANOVA. ANOVA is an acronym for analysis of variation. And it is a test of multiple means. And I'll tell you what I mean by all this. A test that tells us whether or not several groups are related in any particular way. My pen's out of way. But, but what I want to do before I show this to you, because it's, it's the fanciest test we've done so far. So there's a fair amount of calculation involved. On the other hand, we can organize the calculation in a very nice way. And we can work the calculation also on the calculator to back us up. But before I show you this last test, it's a relatively fancy test. We get linear regression in here too. I'm sensitive to this idea that we've buried you in tests and buried you in formulas. So I told you that I was going to update our formula sheet just so that we put more of the formulas down that we've been using recently. And I have done that. So I want to go to the browser and show you where that formula sheet is on our website. Let me get my browser handy and share screen. And here we are. So semesters, winter semester is coming to an end. That's a nice thing about winter semester. Now it's no longer winter. It's actually green outside and some of the days are warm. Oh, we're in week 15 right now. So I have to update the pointer on that website right there. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about analysis of variations, ANOVA. Let me make sure I got another monitor going here so that I see exactly what you're seeing. Give me a second to bring this monitor in. Got it. Got it. Got it, share, and... Okay, I don't need the whiteboard right now, but I need that monitor to tell me what you guys are seeing. So we're talking about ANOVA today. This is gonna use what's called the F distribution and we'll execute that. But under here, handouts, formulas and functions, I've updated this formula sheet. And I could bring it to you in a web browser, right? But then it'd be kind of relatively hard to read. And in fact, it's five pages long. So I'm, this is from the very beginning of the course, all the formulas we've used. 
last time you saw it, they had like three pages on it. But what I did, and I'm gonna expand this greatly on my screen for you, is I added a list of all the hypothesis tests that we've done and the one we're about to do today and the constants for linear regression. I don't wanna share it to you in a browser screen like this because we can't control the size as well. So let me share it to you as a document on my desktop. And I can even pop it into the share feature in Zoom here, in case you wanna download it directly to your machine. So formulas and functions PDF. First of all, I'll put it in the chat window just in case you're interested in it that way, but then I'll post it on the screen. Okay. It has been posted in the chat window. Let me open it up on my screen and share it with you that way. Excuse me. Okay, back to here. So this is a little bit larger, easier for me to control. So yeah, from the very beginning of the course, percentile, quartile, range, uh, upper fence, lower fence, interquartile range, means, population mean, and sample mean. standard deviation, et cetera, variances, which is what we're talking about today. Then we did probability. Then we did the probability density function, the Z distribution, the normal distribution, error bounds, confidence intervals. And then most least recently, we've been doing hypothesis testing, but I want you to think about this for a second and you can go through this list. Do you remember whenever we do hypothesis tests, we say, oh, this is a Z test or this is a T test. Uh, last week we did chi-square distribution. This is the chi-square test. And you probably, well, you could have easily lost track. I lost track of how many tests we have. Think about it. Four different times, we showed you a Z test. A Z test is primarily when you know what the standard deviation of a population is. So the test of a single proportion, the test of a single population proportion, uh, sorry, the test of a single mean, the test of a single population proportion, the test of two population means, the test of two independent population proportions. All of those were Z tests because we either had or could estimate effectively standard deviation of population represented by the sigma here. When you couldn't estimate the standard deviation of a population, you had the T distribution and these T tests Test of a single population mean with unknown population standard deviation. Test of two population means. Test for differences in means. Test for significance of the correlation coefficient. That was most recently in the linear regression. All those things were t-tests because we weren't certain about the standard deviation of the populations, the entire populations we were working on. Last week we did chi-squared test, chi-squared distribution, where you're basically testing two distributions against each other. Test for goodness of fit. Does this observed distribution match this expected distribution? Test for independence. Are these events independent? Is a probability of one happening by itself equal to the probability of one happening after another has happened? These had funny looking test statistics. 
the observed value minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. And then the test for independence was actually a test that used a whole table of values, a matrix. Notice that in the chi-squared test, you have to always cite the degrees of freedom. It's like in the t-test, you always have to cite the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom change based on the test. In the z-test, you didn't have to consider z degrees of freedom at all. You were using the one standard normal distribution. But today we got one more test and it's called ANOVA or analysis of variations. Uh, very specifically, it's a one-way analysis of variations. And I'll tell you what that means as we go on. And it is the fanciest test yet. So I will explain what each of these instructions mean, and we'll do it in an example right away. But you see that I have to prep for quite a while before I get down here to the test statistic. You also see that this has two degrees of freedom in the same way almost test for independence multiplied two numbers, but this test actually has two separate degrees of freedom. And then what we'll talk about on Wednesday called the test of two variances that also has two separate degrees of freedom. Then we have the linear regression formulas that we used last week also. The chi-squared test was a week before last week, yeah, excuse me. The weeks kind of run together. So here you have it. And I don't mean this to be imposing, but here's five pages of formulas we've gone through today uh, in this class. Or maybe you could say you'd like to add others. Uh, we got the major ones here. So on these five pieces of paper, that's kind of like a five paper summary of everything that we've done in this course. Statistics is an interesting class in that you have to use many different formulas based on many different situations. You know, in some math classes, the instructor says no formulas, you just memorize the formulas you need. Well, I couldn't memorize all these formulas. I don't expect you to either. So even if we were in person in a class taking an exam, I would consider this to be our formula sheet, these five pages to be our formula sheet. And everybody would have a copy of the formula sheet while they're working on the exam. In our current environment online, you also have the formula sheet while you're working on the exam because I have the formula sheet that we're looking at posted on our website. Okay, so that's very good prep for today. First of all, I want to remind you of all the tests we've done, particularly this one with a population means of unknown population standard deviations. Do you remember this funky degrees of freedom here? For the test of two population means with unknown standard deviations, that was a mess. All these tests are performed inside your calculator too, but you have to know how to use them. Today, we're concentrating on this test right here called analysis of variations, or, uh, sorry, analysis of variance. And you see that in order to do this, we're gonna need a whole page of formulas. On the other hand, the formulas look much weirder than they actually are. So everywhere you see this funny summation, 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 this the capital Greek letter sigma that represents add these up. So whenever you see that letter, you say, somebody's telling me to add these up. I'm going to show you exactly what they want you to add up. But notice the different flavors the addings come in. Sometimes you're just adding up single numbers. Sometimes you're adding up a whole table of numbers. 
Sometimes you're adding things and then squaring them. Sometimes you're squaring things and then adding them. So we've seen this often in this class that some of the calculations we do are either let's add this up and divide by this, or let's add this up and then square it, or let's square all these, then add them up. And people describe that as sum of squares or square of sums. So you see, I use the same language here when I describe what each of these things means. Okay, I'm gonna keep this piece of paper handy but not necessarily on the screen. And now I'm going to show you how to use this with a basic example. And we'll also show you how to run this in your calculator. And I think for our example, we're gonna look at a particular problem. Got it, got it. Oh, I don't want that problem. Let me see if I can find another one. Yeah, let's look at this problem, 69. And once we do the problem 69, we can also compare against the answer in the back of the book. And I'm going to stop sharing here and go to my paper, but I'll keep this paper handy so we can read all these formulas. And I'm going to pull up a copy of the book elsewhere so that we can read this problem. Let me open up a copy of the book and look at this problem. This is exercise 69. In chapter 13. So let me open it up and read it to you. And then after we get going, we'll transfer it to our paper. We'll transfer it very quickly to our paper. So got the table of contents. And then I'll open this book up in front of you. Good. Let me share a screen. I've got too many screens right now. Okay, now we're looking at this book here. Or as soon as the computer catches up, we're looking at this book here. Uh, wrong screen. Now we're looking at the book. Okay, so this is the end of the chapter 13. Let's find problem 69. Sliding down. Here's a kind of a basic and interesting question. And you say, wow, that's a, such a direct question. We should be able to answer that. We should be able to answer that with statistics. But what kind of test should we perform? So let me blow this up a bit. Increase the size of the font. That's not going to help too much. There we go. Here we have final exam scores from statistics classes, or it could be history classes, or they could be chemistry classes, whatever you like. 
And some of the scores are from an online class. Some of the scores are from hybrid classes. Some of the scores are from face-to-face -face classes. So I take this to mean that face-to-face -face means you were doing the class in person as we have often done before. Online class means you're doing the class online, only online as you're doing right now. Hybrid, sometimes people use that word when some of the class is online and some of the class is meeting face-to-face. -face. So let's assume that you have a lot of examples of this if you're the teacher. Oh, I've done the online class many times at this college or this high school. I've done the hybrid class many times. I've done the face-to-face -face class many times. I've collected a lot of information. I wonder if scores on the final exams are the same regardless of what way the class was delivered. So here's some scores for the online final exam. 72, 84, 77, I have no idea what these numbers mean. Are the numbers out of 100? Are the numbers out of 150? Are the numbers out of 200? That's not what we're asking. But I can take these five numbers and easily do an average. We'll do that in a second. What about the hybrid course? 83, 73, 84, 81. I can again easily take these numbers and find the average. We'll do that on the calculator in a second. How about face-to-face -face course? We've well, got a few more exams here. 80, 78, 84, 81, 86, 79, 82. At first, they're just numbers. But the question is, you want to know if they're really different. Would you want to know if you were a student or an instructor? that in the face-to-face -face class, the final exam scores were higher. Then you take the face-to-face -face class possibly if you could. But then you got another friend who teaches with you and that other friend says, no, they're all the same. I don't think there's any difference between them. That's what we're gonna test. We can test to see if there's any difference between the final exam scores of online students, hybrid students, or face-to-face -face students. Not whether there's a difference among these students, because I can easily compute the difference among these students, and we'll do that. But I want to know if these are random representatives of all online students, all hybrid students, all face-to-face -face students in this class. I want to know if I can make a pronouncement to all the students. Look, if you take this class face to face, you could get a better score in the class and the exam than if you took it online or hybrid, whichever one is, maybe online is better. But I've, I've got this other friend who says, no, no, they're all the same. David, they're all the same. Why do you think it makes any difference? That's what I wanna test. So first of all, I'm gonna write these on my paper. And let me write them on my paper relatively large. And let me share the paper with you too. But I'm gonna need a fair amount of space. So I'm gonna write relatively large. This is exercise number 69 in chapter 13. It's a fairly, these tests are fairly detailed. So it's gonna take us a little while to perform those. I got my online test scores. I got my hybrid test scores. Part of the class is online, part of the class is face-to-face. -face. And I got my face-to-face -face test scores. Notice that I have different numbers of scores. I've got five scores for the online people, 72, 84, 77, 80, 81. In a second, we'll put all these numbers in the calculator. For the hybrid student final exam, I only have three sample scores.
Uh, sorry, four. For the face-to-face, -face, I have seven. 88, 78. 84, 81. 76, sorry, 86. 79. And 82. Now, I could easily compute the average of each one of these, and we're going to do that in the calculator. Let's say that I did that and I have the mean or average for the online scores, the mean or the average for the hybrid scores, and the mean, the average for the face to face scores. And now let's go to my paper. And I'm not always interested in just the mean. <coughs> I'm interested also in the standard deviation. The standard deviation tells me what the spread is like. Maybe the face-to-face -face scores are tightly bunched. Stop sharing there. Maybe the online scores are widely spread. So remember, I can calculate the standard deviation for the online scores standard deviation for the hybrid scores, and the standard deviation for the face-to-face -face scores. I can do all of these very quickly on the calculator. Even though these aren't a lot of numbers, I'd hate to use the formulas by hand. So let's ram them into the calculator and write down these facts. So I'm going to have to share another screen. Where's the calculator? Right there. Let's go over to the calculator. Uh, here's our drawing from recently. Let's clear that drawing. Let's clear that screen. Let's get out of here. And uh, I'm going to make this screen a little bit smaller so I can fit more things onto it. Let's clear these buttons. Got it. So what I want to do is enter these three lists in the calculator just right off the bat. Let's enter them in the calculator. Edit. Oh, I got to get rid of these lists. So no problem. Let's go up to the name of the list. Hit clear. And that list is then gone. So now I'll enter these numbers really quickly. 72, 84, 77, 80, 81. There's the online students. And next list, 83. 73, 84, 81, four hybrid students. Now the face-to-face -face test scores, 80, 78, 84, 81, 86, 79, 82. So that's just as we've written on the paper, but the advantage here is the calculator immediately does the statistics on these, right? So I gotta do it three, I gotta do it one at a time, but let's do stats, calculate, one variable stats, let's first do L1. Give me a lot of information, but I'm interested in the mean, which is 78.8, and the standard deviation, which is, this is a sample, Four five four nine seven. Okay, now let's do that for list number two. I'm writing these on my paper. We'll go back to my paper in a second. Stats, calculate one variable stats, but we'll change it to list two. This is very nice. Just get the numbers right away here. And we have 80.25. This is the thing I do not want you on a test to show me how you calculated these. I'll let you use the calculator on this. I do want to show you how to do the test statistic. You need to demonstrate that. Standard deviation 49917. And now for the last list, list number three. 
calculate one variable statistics, this three. The mean is 81.43. The standard deviation is 2.8199. If you round off 2.8200. Okay, let's look at this on the paper. We'll come back to the screen in a short time. We'll come back to the screen in a short time. So I'm gonna stop the sharing and go back to my paper. So we've written these things down and remember what we're saying. I'm saying that it makes a difference whether you take the class online, hybrid or face-to-face. -face. I think that the average score on exams is not always the same. My friend says, no, you're silly. That's always the same. It doesn't matter whether you take the class online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. So my friend is making an assumption, a hypothesis, that the online average of all students, the whole population, and the hybrid average of all students, and the face-to-face -face mean average of all students is always the same. I'm saying no, they are not all equal. These are our two hypotheses. Now it's not good enough for me to point to my friend and say, look it, do you see these people scored 78.8? And these people scored 81.43. That doesn't prove anything. That just proves that my samples are different. But it doesn't say that in general, the three methods are different, right? So I have these samples and I want to test if I can say something about the population. Is this difference? in the sample means enough to tell me that there's a difference in the courses? Or is it not strong enough evidence? Let's look at the standard deviations. 4.5, 4.9, 2 2.8. Well, they're kind of the same, but they're not exactly the same. Face-to-face -face classes definitely bunch together closer. Yeah, but that's just these seven people. Maybe I picked a different seven people. Maybe I missed the people here that would have driven this average up or in hybrid case. So here's what I want to do. I want to test to see if the means should be the same, but I want to use that's why this is called analysis of variance. I want to use the variance, the variability. Remember, standard deviation and variance are related, right? Standard deviation, variance. Variance was the sum of the squares divided by the number of the elements, standard deviation, was the square root of that. So remember these code words. The variance is the square of the standard deviation or in reverse, standard deviation is the square root of the variance, whether it's a sample or the whole population. So the variance is not 4.5, 4.9, 2.8. Those are the standard deviations. If I squared them, I would get the variances. And on the calculator, you could square them or the test could provide it for you. And here's our logic. If we assume that the variances are about the same, then 
we could imply that these standard deviations are about the same since we're talking about the same group of students. You know, I'm not talking about students that only take things online, only hybrid, only face-to-face. -face. Let's just talk about the general pile of students. Their scores in the statistics class are probably normally distributed. You know, a lot of people in the middle, a few people on the top end, few people on the bottom end. So if these variances don't make a significant difference, then I'm assuming that these means won't either. Now here's where it gets weird. Here's where it gets complicated. In order to perform this test, I need a new distribution called the F distribution. That's already built into your calculator. But in order to perform the test, I need the formulas based on these numbers right here. I need to know not just what the sum of these numbers is, those I can easily compute, but I need to know what happens if I sum them and square each column. I need to know what happens if I sum all of them and then square all of them. I need to know what happens if I square all of them and then add them all together. Those are gonna be the data that I use to construct my test statistic. But that's a whole pile of mess. That's a whole pile of squaring and summing and messing around. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna write this smaller on another piece of paper. And then I'm gonna have the calculator do things like add up the columns for me. It already did in a way to do the mean. Then I'm gonna have the calculator square those things, square the whole things, add up the whole things together. We're gonna to do a lot of calculations. The calculations come from this table on the formula sheet that I showed you. So I go back now and share this formula sheet with you. I have to find it. Okay, good, got it. Share formulas. So now I got to tell you what each one of these things means. And as I do, I'm going to rewrite these numbers on my paper the same way I wrote them on the previous paper, but a little bit smaller so I can fit in more work. So I'm going to rewrite these as we speak. And of course, hopefully copy them over neatly and correctly. The first thing I noticed when we wrote these numbers down in general was that, okay, that column slipped a little bit too far to the right. That's the hybrid column, sorry. Here's the face-to-face -face column, 80, 78, 84, 81, 86, 79, 82. The first thing I noticed about these three columns was they had different numbers in them, right? Different number of elements. Let's make the online number, that's four. N online. Number, oh, sorry, that's not four. Can't do two things at once. That's five. The number of hybrid test scores I had was four. The number of face to face test scores I had was four plus three, seven. So what I have here is three groups. And I want to explain to you how the formulas on this piece of paper you're looking at work. So I'm writing on the paper, but I'm going to concentrate on the formulas. And these are like the lists that I put right here. 
you see here, I said, oh, you get a one list, two list, three list, four lists, all the way up to K lists. Well, you can do this with as many lists as you want, 10, 20, 30. Well, that's a lot of calculating. Here we have three lists. And I'm gonna count those lists with the letter J. So J equals one, J equals two, and J equals three. In fact, I could do the same thing with the number of elements in each list. I think I'll do that. N1, let's make it simpler than writing letters. N1 is five, N2 is four, N3 is seven. Now, the next thing I wanna do is number all these data points, like I equals one, first data point, second data point, third data point, fourth data point. That's it for the hybrid list, but the online list and the face-to-face -face have fifth data point. That's it for the online. Then we have in the face-to-face, -face, we have a sixth data point and a seventh data point. Now I'm doing that so that I could name the data points. For example, 77 is the third data point in the first group. It's called X31. And 81 in the last column is the fourth data point in the third group, X43. So each one of these numbers has a name. And that is what you see in this table on the formula sheet. And that is what you see in the formulas we're gonna add up. So the first thing to do is pretend, not pretend, to assign a name to each of those numbers. So what is the number of data in the jth group? First group, second group, third group. So I have all these data numbers. N1 is five, N2 is four, and three is seven. Now let's add them all together. Remember what this symbol stands for? The summation symbol says, add together all the Ns, the Nj's, N1, N2, N3. So when I do that, N is the sum of one, two, three numbers. And that five plus four plus seven, 16. Okay, so not more than that, N is 16. N1 is five, N2 is four, and N3 is seven. Now let's do the next assignment. And that is, let's add all of the columns individually. We could call that SJ, or we could just say, I'm gonna sum up all the elements in the jth column, first column, second column, as many columns as I have all the way up to K. Here I only have three columns. Let's make a sum of all the elements in column one. Let's make a sum of all the elements in column two. Let's make a sum of all the elements in column three. Now, by the way, the author uses S for sum, and that's perfectly okay but she also used S for standard deviation. So that's a little bit awkward. I'm gonna use a capital S for sum and lowercase s for standard deviation. But it's hard to see when someone writes a capital S or lowercase s. In the formula sheet, it's a little bit easier. So I'll put little heads and tails on my capital S's to make it easier to see. How am I gonna add up these five numbers, four numbers, seven numbers? Well, I could add them up by hand, but the calculator's already added them up. Remember, calculator's already added them up. So I'm going to go, stop sharing the screen for a second. Got it.
and go to my calculator. Excuse me. I want to see if I can show you two things at once. Ah, calculator and formula sheet, go. Never shared two things at once. You're going to see how it works. It's not remarkable for me. OK, well, I don't know how it shows up necessarily on your screen, but on my screen, it just shows up as separate windows. But let's add up all the elements in each list. Now, remember, the last thing we did was list three. And I know that because the mean was 81.43. So here it says that the sum of all those elements is 570. The sum of all the elements in list two, we're going to have to go and do list two over again. That doesn't take a big time. Sum of all the elements in list two was 321. And what are the sum of all the elements in list one? Calculate one variable statistics, list one. Sum of all those elements is 394. Okay, what I want to do is show you that I'm slowly checking off each one of these things. So I've counted how many elements are in each list. I've added up all the elements. Oh, excuse me, I had to sneeze them. <coughs> I've added up all the elements. <coughs> excuse me. I have added up all the columns. So I know the first column adds up to 394, a second column adds up to 321, and the third column adds up to 570. Now here's my next job. They want me to square the sum of all the columns. I got to square 394, square 321, and square 570. OK, no problem, except I am going to use my calculator to do that. Notice I put the little heads and tails on the S's, just so you know that these are capital S's from this formula sheet. So let me check this out on the calculator. Now, I'm not going to flash to my calculator screen for that. I'm just going to get my personal calculator and square all these people. So 394 squared is 155236. I don't think I left myself enough room. 321 squared. 103041. 570 squared. 324900. 900. So this is a relatively big job. I'm going to assemble everything on this list. And now I've got the first four things assembled. How many elements are in each group? What's the total number of elements by adding all the elements together? What's the sum of each column? Column or group, you could say either one. And then what's the square of each of those sums of the columns? Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is add up all the data in all the groups. Now that's S1 plus S2 plus S3. That is the sum from J equals one to three. I'm gonna to go to my paper, even though I'm reading from this formula sheet. That's the sum from J equals one to three of all the SJs. 
put a little head and tail on that S so you know it's a capital S. That's a fancy way of saying, I just want you to add up S1, S2, and S3. So let's add up S1 plus S2 plus S3. When I add those together, 394, 321, 570. Again, I'm gonna do that on my hand calculator. That's 1285. You can do that on your calculator alongside. Okay, back to my formula sheet for just a second. So now we got this fifth number. We're working our way down to our test statistic. Okay, next thing is, and, and by the way, when I say 1285, I added the columns and then I added the columns together. So the 1285 means I've added all these test scores together, every single test score. This is the sum of all test scores. Now, what's the next line say? Say, you're gonna take the sum of all the test scores and square it. The square of the sum of all the data in the groups. So now I want you to take S1 plus S2 plus S3, hat and tail on each one and square that. That's gonna be a massive number. So 1285 squared, 165, 1225. Now, the only thing I can say for myself right now is I'm glad I don't have decimals yet, right? So I'm not rounding anything off. I'm taking the numbers just as they come. I'm sure decimals are going to pop up sooner or later. Okay, now we're down to the very last stage here. And that says, I want you to square each of these numbers and then add them up. Now that's gonna be a serious pain that I'm gonna have to perform on a calculator, right? I can square 72. Uh, four, nine, 14, two, eight, five, one, eight, five, one, eight, four. I could take 72 and square it. And I got it right, fortunately, right? But I have no interest in squaring all these numbers, 16 numbers, both of them two digits. There's no way I'm going to square them. But I not only have to square them, according to this formula, I have to square them, every single one of them, and then add them together in each column. And then the result from all the columns. That's how you could think of this double summation. All right, let me slide up that paper. So I wanna square them all and then add up each column and then add up all the column results. But there's no way I wanna write down 16 four digit numbers. So that's where I'm gonna to go to the calculator again. Let's go to the calculator. And first of all, put these three lists together and then tell the calculator to square each number. I'll show you how you could do that visually in the calculator. Share screen, share calculator. Let me find my calculator. There it is. So what I can do right here, let's go to my stats menu, edit. I want to create a new super list. And the super list is going to have all these numbers together. And then I'll square them all. Here's how I can do that. There's a command under the list button 
called augment. That means glue them together. So what I could do, stats menu, say second function list, operations augment. And the calculator says, what do you want me to glue together? I wish I could just say L1, L2, L3. What I'm gonna to do to get is glue together L1 and L2. You just do them two at a time. And then after that, I can glue on L3. First, there's L1 and L2 together. Now, let me see if I can create a new list where I glue together L3 and L4. I could do this all in one step. I'll show you how to do it all in one step in a second. Under second function list, operations, augment. Oops, sorry, I lost it. Augment is up here at number nine. Now let's augment, let's glue together L3 and L4. L3, comma, L4. Got it. And there's the list of all the numbers, all 16 of them. Notice that there's 16 numbers in that list. 81 is the 16th number and the 17th is blank. Now the problem is I used up some columns to do that. So let me show you how to do that in one step. Let me clear this off. And let me clear this one off. And let me show you how to put all three lists together in one stroke. Say second function list, augment, number nine. And before you put anything in there, put another augment in there. Second function list, augment, number nine. First, I'll glue together L1 and L2. And next, I'll glue together L3. Now, we spent a lot of time talking in the beginning. I know I'm getting towards the end, but I'll just illustrate this one thing, and then we'll pick this up where we left off on Wednesday. OK, bad news. Let's find out what went wrong. Second function, list, ops, stat, edit. What did we do right here? Okay, so I got to make sure I'm sitting on L4, then I hit the equal sign. So then I do list, augment, sorry, list, augment under ops nine, augment again under ops, list ops nine, and then L1, comma L2, stop, and then L3, I think I forgot that last comma when I had the error a second ago. Let's try this. It should glue all three lists together. And it did. There's my 16 elements. Stopping with 82. Okay, good. Now I can make L5 square each of them. So I'll take L4 and square it. There's the terrible squares I didn't want to do by myself. Notice it begins with 5184. And now I can use another list operation called sum, not under ops, but under math called sum number five. And I'll tell the calculator to add together list five. Now you could have just punched the 16 numbers in your calculator, but again, that would have been a lot of time. So here's what I get. One, zero, three, four, two, seven. Let me share that on my paper. Excuse me. 
there's this, each one of these being squared and added up. And let me share that on my formula sheet because we're gonna cut it off here in just a second. Let's look at the formula sheet one more time. It took us quite a while, but I've done each of these preliminary calculations. And by the way, this is exactly how they're doing the calculations in the book, but there are several typographical errors here in this book that we're gonna to have to address next time, even in the online version. So I think you're gonna to have to use my formula sheet as my trustworthy source. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is add together these things that I've computed and then divide by two key numbers, the degrees of freedom between the groups and the degrees of freedoms within the groups. And that creates two statistics, the mean square between the groups, the mean square within the groups. And that's our test statistic that we're gonna stick into the F distribution. This is very slow going. And next time we'll pick up here exactly where we left off. But the problem is this is the most sophisticated test you've done yet. Analysis of variations. This is a very fancy test. You're given a group of data and you want to know if there's any difference between the groups. You could do this with test scores. You could do this with medical treatment. This is a very common way they test things when they're testing drugs in medical context. I'm gonna take these people and give them different treatments for their flu, for their cold or whatever they're treating them for. How do I know that those treatments are different at all? Maybe everything I'm doing for these people doesn't change anything. Maybe everything I give to these people, they still have the same results. On the other hand, if I know that the results are different, then I can look and see, well, which one of them? I can do more tests and say, which one of them was the most effective? But first I have to know that there's any difference at all. And that's what we call the analysis of variations. So I've taken these lists of numbers. I've performed these five tasks excuse me, six tasks, seven tasks. I performed these seven tasks. And now we're ready to put them together and test to see if they're different or not. Now, by the way, this test can be performed immediately on your calculator, but I want you to know how to perform it by hand. If you like, let's slip over the calculator just one more time before we leave. And I'll show you where the buttons are for performing this on your calculator. Let me get my calculator out and calculator in front of me. Now it's in front of me, now it's in front of you. I'll clear these screens. All right, clear, 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 clear. And let me show you what I can do with these three lists. In fact, I don't even need fourth list and the fifth list. So let's clear list four and let's clear list five. Of course, I could have them back if I wanted to. See, now I only have the three lists. And now we'll go to our statistics tests Statistics, tests, and it is the very last test. Because if you've gone through the book with us, even though we don't all use them all the time, we've gone through every one of these tests, except the last two, two sample F tests and the ANOVA. See, it's got this fancy letter F. So if I say ANOVA, and say, please compare for me list one, list two, and list three. 
Okay, that's no good. I got to put commas in between them. Sorry. Let me insert commas. So this is built into the calculator, this test and all the calculations that we've been doing. So I say to the calculator, please compare the lists one, two, and three for me and tell me if you think that they come from different populations. Calculator says, here's your test statistic, 0.63. Here's your p-value, 0.54. And remember our p-value that we use for the critical value for the level of confidence is 0 0.05. So already the p-value is not less than alpha. So I have no reason to believe that these lists are different. But I wanna show you the other things it calculates here. Do you see how it calculates what I wrote on my formula sheet, the SS and the MS for the factor and for the error. It also calculates two degrees of freedom, degree of freedom for factor and degree of freedom for error. And then it creates a standard deviation that we'll talk about later. So if you wanna to cut to the end of the story, if you're that kind of person who reads the last page of the book and ruins the whole story, what I just did is had the calculator perform the ANOVA test and the calculator says, the probability of these three lists being very different by random chance, it's not very great. These lists are most probably from three populations that were the same. The calculator says, if I've done everything right, most likely it doesn't matter whether I took those tests from the online people, the hybrid people, or the face-to-face -face people. Okay, that's too much sharing for today. I've overstayed my welcome. We're gonna take all these numbers, these seven numbers that we've calculated, and we're gonna put them together and show you how the calculator reaches conclusion next time. But this is a very intense test and we'll have to finish it on Wednesday. Uh, Start your review, look over that formula sheet in great detail. See if you remember those tests, practice performing the old tests. So you'll be ready to go. Uh, when you get your exam. I did forget to mention one thing about the exam. Remember the exam, every part of our exam course is just from chapters 11 through 13. So just on the most recent things we did. But it's not bad to practice all the other tests, but we're just gonna focus on chapters 11 through 13. Okay, that's too much, I've overdid it. And we got other places to go. I appreciate your attention and I'll see you again on Wednesday.